Let's watch the real talk with Eileen TV show by our very own daughter of Sierra Leone, Eileen Kistar. This is Real Talk with Eileen. Like I said, I'm your host, Eileen Kistar. If you missed earlier, today I have with me the last king. I mean, you know, the rappers and Pharaoh, aka Gabazin, aka. So many AKAs, but definitely he'll be here to talk about it. Help me welcome Cal De Nero. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> clear, bro. Me clean, clean, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, if you don't know, this is the first official wow. episode. Wow, wow. I am honored that you're here, but it's then you got to, you know, you gotta feel blessed. You know what I'm <laughs> so welcome, true. welcome, welcome. Oh, thanks, man. Um, definitely, I'm happy to be here. It's a blessing for me to be the first guest. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, definitely, I feel like it's great. I see you doing it big. You, you know, know, Oprah style. <laughs> yes. You're killing it. You're yes. killing it. I love thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so no much. Um, you know, Cal, of course, there's so many things. There's a lot of controversies. It. And today, right. we're going to tell it all. Hey, we're going I'm to cool. talk. Cool. So do not go anywhere because we're here. So let me go to Caldinero because right. earlier we talked about all the different names. James Bond, 007. Back <laughs> you know, you see what I mean? I mean, for real though, like, so what do you want me to call you today? Today I go by Ida Raconto Philly. Ida Raconto Philly <laughs> is here. We got the names, so there's a lot of these names. Um, let's go back to where you started because I always tell people they see the glory, they don't know the story. True. You know what I mean? And of course, we had a pre, you know, interview, and you, there's a lot about you, like I said earlier. Um, when did you realize you can rap? I mean, was it before the whole refugee status or, <laughs> you know, it was when you went to America? Nah, actually, um, even as a kid, um, God bless my mom. She's not here no more. Oh, but she used sorry, to tell yeah. the stories, you know, coming from work. I was the kid that always used to call all my friends to come to our living room. Okay. I'll, I'll grab like a tamatis cup, as they call it. I give it to one of my friends mm -hmm. and I'll grab like a stick. You play the guitar, you play the drums. So we scatter the whole living room. When my oh, mom wow. come, she always used to be mad because I'll have like 10 kids in our living room. Everybody playing a role like it's a band. Really? You know, yes, that's how I was. I was that kind of kid. So um, with the rapping situation, you know, it started in primary school, I believe. You know, I okay. used to memorize. I remember we used to, they, there was an artist called Ice MC. Back in the days, like yeah, Ice MC. Yeah, He's 1990, okay. he came out with a with an album where he was Eddie Murphy. Mm. Remember that? Yeah. So yeah, I remember I used to like mimic him, write like some lyrics on my own, like, write poetry. So it started from those days, you know, way before I went to the states. So way you know? before. Yeah, way before. So way you before. writing poetry? I mean, I know a Definitely. lot of lyricists do that. Definitely. Why didn't you focus on poetry? <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to commercialize my art. You know what I okay. mean? Poetry is cool, but it's it's a little slow, you know, slower. You know, like when, when I had my diary, you know, because I used to read comics, you know, com comic oh, books okay. from Nigeria. You know, I would do my own theater, you know, create my oh, own really? stories. Yeah, in primary school. This was like around class five, class six. Just you know? like we had like Ikebe Super and stuff like that? Yeah, you know, Papa Jasko. Papa Jasko, Boya Linko, Boya Linko. All oh. those things. I used to even have fan club, fan friends in Nigeria okay. in Ghana. So, you know, I was always artistic, you know, and the school recognized that. Shout out to St. Joseph Primary School in Masuela, Lunge. Okay. You know, if you go back there, they will tell you that Amara history has always been artistic, you know. So, um, growing up, it developed. When I came to Freetown, I started attending St. Edwards. I was in Kuto Road, you oh, know, Goy Street. Yeah. So, um, I had a couple of friends, and we got hooked on into rap music, you know, St. Edwards was that kind of school. When you go to Edwards, there was always rap arguments about who's hot in America, what's new. So it's about who has the biggest magazine coming to school. You know, okay. so I got hooked on to it. I had a friend. His name is Lamrana Jalo. Shout out to Lamrana. I remember he was the first guy that came to school with Snoop Dogg's album, Doggy Style. Doggy Style. Yeah, I was into Buju Bantan then. 
you know, so he brought it. He like, oh, I'll tell you the listen in Jamaica. Jamaica like, can't listen, can't listen to real music. Rap. He really? gave me that doggy style CD. I took it home and I fell in love. Oh. So shout out to Snoop Dogg. Snoop, Snoop Dogg really like curved me into a rapper. Like, oh, it makes you know? sense. No wonder before it was Snoop Cow. Exactly. Oh, now it's Cow De Niro. Yeah. So where did the cow come from? Because I know Snoop because of Snoop Dogg. So well, he just wanted to do something else. True. Now nah, it was like this. Um, I fell in love with Snoop Dogg and the Dog Pound. You know, corrupt and does all those things. Warren G. You know, then I started imitating. I remember the first song I tried to perform was Regulate Warren G. Regular and the dog. Warren G. Yeah. And dog. So then I I just imitated. I started calling myself Snoop Cow. I was dressing like Snoop Dogg, wearing <laughs> really? khakis. We used to have back in '94, '95 sneakers they call Kachompan. <laughs> you know those. I remember sneakers. those. Yeah, that's what I used to wear. I was rocking those those draft shirts. You know, so the name went around, like around Kuto Road in Brookfields, you know, but then I had a mentor then, he's dead now, Doss, King Doss. King Doss, okay, He's like a him. pioneer, he's you know. Rest. Yeah, I used to go to him at Sykes Street, he has um, a room where he was calling the place 40 Acres Production. So we would all come there, me, Yoke Seven, all the guys I was trying to rap, you know, he would just be doing beatboxing with his mouth, and you spit your best rap. Yeah, that's where I started getting my confidence up. And then one day he told me, he said, why are you calling yourself Snoop Cow? He's like, you have to be original, man. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Don't be calling yourself you Snoop, Snoop Dogg. Yeah, you know, or Snoop Cow yeah, yeah. after Snoop Dogg. So I thought about it. I was like, all right, the cow thing is cool. But I'll switch it from C-O-W to K-A-O. Okay. Meaning moon in Chinese. Something moon, big. Something big. Yeah. I did not know that. Dinero is Italian, meaning money. Money. So yeah. it's all about big things, you know? That's so big things, the, making yes, big money. Yes, yes. Oh, cool. That's really that's, good. That's where it came from. Um, good. So now Black Leo. No doubt. Um, I mean, I know some people know they don't. Why Black Leo? Where did you get that from? Now we know about Cal Dinero, but Black Leo. Well, Black Leo is um, after things progressed, you know, um, like 96, 97, you know, I was leaving school. Then I started getting into groups. I was in a group called World Up Society. Okay. It was me, Slez from X Project, from X Project. CJ, Aral Bone. You know, Are CJ. You serious? Yeah, you yeah. guys were in a group? Yes, we was in a group. The group was called World Up Society. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, like, yeah, we used to go to OG contests, talent shows okay. that was created by Egat and Shaba, Uzo Rex and them. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, then we was like, yo, there was no studios around. You know what I mean? We wanted, wanted to do like a compilation CD. Okay. It was like, all right, everybody any up. You put up some money, I put up some money. Mm -hmm. Daddy Saj was part of it with Daddy Saj, um, Bow Wow Society. Okay. Shout out to A class. class. But yeah, so we, we got together. We was like, you know what? Let's create something where we can put money together. And we go to Sam Jones. Sam Jones was the only studio around. Island Records at Lumley. You know, okay. the only musicians we knew then was Teddy Bongo. You know, those kind of guys, you know, the Kabaz. So we didn't really have like a hip hop nah, artist. No, there was no scene. None of that. There okay. was no scene. You know, Jimmy B came. He did his show at the stadium, the stadium from South Africa then. But, you know, we was the youth coming up. We wanted to revolutionize the game and start, bring our own vibe. Mm -hmm. So it was like, how are we going to call this? Then the name Black Leo came up. You know what I mean? It was like, right, Black for the skin, Leo for the Leo Mountain, Sierra Leone. Oh, Sierra Something that represents Sierra Leone, you know? That's how the name came about, you know. And I thought you were a Leo. That's what it was. <laughs> nah, a lot of people think that. Serious? I'm a Libra. I'm Honestly, a Libra. You're a Libra. Yeah. Oh, okay. Up to date. How many albums do you have on your belt? Well, officially, I can say at least I just dropped my 11th album. 11? 11 albums, yeah. Oh, wow. You know what I mean? From um, The first album was Black Leo for Life, Stories from Freetown, Freetown's Most Wanted, King of Freetown, then I started The New Beginning with Tete. Okay. Then Blood Diamond Kid Story, Back to My Roots, Now or Never, Last King, and um, this one right now, the new one, Kiss the Throne. Kiss the Throne. So it's 10 plus a mixtape, Road to Victory. We mix it 11. Okay. You know? Good. That's a lie. Yeah. You know, but you know, with all the hit songs you have, of course, when you talk about Superstars, Cabernet is part of it. But there, you know, there's little hits and bits there about the poor quality of videos that you have. Why, I mean, why are the reasons for that? Like, you know what I mean? Because when, he, when they talk about cow, right. we want, we expect in quality, we expect in a lot. No doubt. You know, but you've released some videos where I think you released a, a video, not the Lumumba video, but a video before that. Everybody's like, oh my God, you just really ruined the song and blah, 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 whatever it is. <laughs> What's the problem? What would you say is the problem for that? 
Well, I think when it comes to that, it's opinion based. You know, okay. like um, some people will tell you they like the videos. You know what I mean? Some people will say it's trash. But I feel like we are limited when it comes to Sierra Leonean artists. We are very, very limited. You know, but another area when you look at it is our people are full of complex. If it doesn't carry a big name, it's not good. Okay. You know what I mean? No matter how good it is. If it's if, if if I go take Songa right now to shoot a video for me, people will still criticize it because it's not Patrick Ellis or not Clarence, Clarence Peters. Peters. That's just how we are. You know okay. what I mean? And I like to give opportunity to up and coming guys that's coming up that's not known. You know, but he's very creative. He gets directives from me. You know, I give him my direction because most people are full of egos. You know what I mean? You can't really bring your vision out to life mm -hmm. you know i think you know there's room for improvement okay. definitely i acknowledge that okay. you know and i'm definitely working in that area but i don't feel the video as terrible as the way they make as it, where they make it you know they make it to be like i feel like it's still okay you know what i mean because even the videos where i, I put all my resources civilians never supported those videos like the video i shot in jamaica it was shot by damien gill this is the guy that shoots videos for damien mali and all signal names. It wasn't promoted by Sierra Leoneans. I spent money, flew to Kingston, shot the video. It's nothing. Nothing. Green Gold, you know, with Run Town. That video, yeah. the budget was fifteen thousand dollars. Flying Patrick Ellis yeah, here to Sierra Leone. To... You know what I mean? With his old crew, we shot the video. We did some things behind the scenes for it to be successful. It wasn't Sierra Leoneans that promoted that video. Uh -huh. You know, if it was just left like that, it would have just been stuck on YouTube. But I'm saying that to say this, that mm -hmm. we spend more time on the negative, negative sort of side thing. of things, you know? If the, as much as we, we criticize, if that's how we promote, trust me, have you seen um, Nigeria, don't Jaga, Jaga, where yeah, Nigeria started? Nigeria is exactly back, from look at back. that video. But Nigerians wasn't coming out then criticizing Idris Abdul Karim. Right. What they did was, behind the scenes, they came and supported their guys and, and bring the best them. equipment and bring funds, see how, we are very limited, you know. For you yeah. to have like a classic That's video, true. it costs a lot, $20,000 and up. Imagine that. And you can't pay 30,000 Leons here to go see a show. Ooh, that's a point right there. A high expectations in a broke in industry. In a broken industry. You know what I mean? I, I hear you now, I'm getting there, I'm getting That's what there. it is, it's the fact. True, true. <laughs> so I think it was 2014, I'm not sure. Right. Um, you had an international deal. But then that deal didn't work out. Um, a lot of people were saying that, oh, you know, so it's not cow <laughs> because he's arrogant, because this, because that. You know right. what I mean? Whatever it was, why didn't it work out? Well, yes, it was some um, creative factory in Atlanta. You know, um, I was signed. And I remember I was getting $1,500 every month okay. as per DM. Mm -hmm. I was recording at um, a studio called Patchwork Studios in Atlanta. That's where I met Gucci Man. I met T.I., I met Keisha Cole. You know, oh. things was going great. And then I got a call from a civil union here. It was time for the 50th anniversary. Okay. You know, um, they was like, I want you to come perform. I'm like, okay. I told the label. I'm like, yo, this is my country. It's the 50th anniversary celebration. I can't miss it. I have to go. They're like, are you getting paid? I said, yeah. They said, where's the money? I said, when I get back there, you know, I'll get, get paid. You know, so there was a little bit against it. Because then they was negotiating for me to do a song with Akon. This is when Akon was hot. What's he wanted like $100,000. The label wanted to give him fifty. Oh. Yeah, this, this, this is fact. Everything I'm saying here. So, but I was pushing the guys for me to come and perform for the independence. Independent. We came, we performed. After the performance, where's the money? Stories start coming. Oh. oh, no. You know, the money ran out. The budget ran out. This and that. I was stuck here for over three weeks. I wasn't paid. Oh, my no. American guy that I came with was disappointed. What oh. are we going to tell the label? We went back to Atlanta. They're like, you see, we're spending it's money on you. And, you and the first show in your country that you're supposed to bring back and say, this is what I made for my country. They booked me. You couldn't even deliver on that. So the owner of the label, because of that and a bunch of other things that was happening, okay. he came and he closed the whole thing, he shut the whole thing everything. down. Oh, so I'm you sorry see. to hear that. Yeah, but that's what it's happened. Okay. All right, so I'm here with Kyle Gennaro. Um, we're going to go on a break. When we come back, he's going to be right here with me all throughout the show. There's so much to talk about. Trust me.
Let's watch the real talk with Eileen TV show by our very own daughter of Sierra Leone, Eileen Kistar. Welcome back to Real Talk with Aline. This is the Maiden Edition. If you're here on set is Hydra Contafili, aka Cardinero. Because no. today on the scene, I'm so for call and move. You got the name then, super cool, but for today, not that name, they carry on. So when we talk about Australian artists, right. you know, superstars, big names, it doesn't matter where you are. There is no way you will mention an artist in Syria and not talk about Cal Dinero. Um, <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, um, you seem to not get along with a lot of people in the industry. You know, why is that? Well, you know, um, from my perspective, you know what I mean, and observation, you know, since I started like gaining momentum in the industry in Sierra Leone, I've always involved in beefs or controversies. Okay. You know, like starting from the Dry Eye Crew, to the Noble Squad, to the RFM, to the Shadow Boxers. Like, I've always been the target. You know, and um, this industry is very small, but it's more to where, like, people align themselves with affiliations. So a friend of Yoke 7 will never like out in Arrow. A friend of LAJ will never support Black Leo. A friend of Dry Eye Crew will never support Caldenero. So do you see what I have to go against? Yes. There's, all these people have followings. They have cousins. They have DJs. They have people that are in the industry. They will not come out and be like, no, I used to be Dry Eye Crew or I, I'm Absolutely. RFM. They are like in disguise. They're in their areas. areas. Okay. But whenever the name Caldenero comes up, they are anti that. You know, so... But why is that, though? Because well, earlier you mentioned um, at King Dusty Studio. You right, mentioned the, right. the likes of Yoke 7. I think, I think it's... So for me hearing that, and now I'm like, right. Yoke 7 and Caldenero, the beefing. I mean... I think <laughs> once you start rising... Exactly. Imagine being at a, like a session with Yoke 7. We rhyming together. Okay. We started from the get-go. Okay. Now I'm packing stadiums. I'm oh. doing hip-hop. We all hip started together. But now, when I go to PZ, everybody's following me. Okay. That guy will be sitting there like, damn, I mean, this guy starts. Yeah, it looks like why, you know. why now did they call him king of free town? What okay. about me? It's not about like that. I have to be honest. This is the fact. Okay. From my opinion, I feel that's the problem. That's it's problem. more of jealousy, envy okay. of why him? Why not me? Why not? Okay. Why is he getting all the attention? We started together. You know what I mean? <laughs> the industry is separated. I can okay. tell you that much. People okay. can act like fake it all in one. But it's more about cabals, you know what I mean? It's about, I'm affiliated with this guy, so that's who I'm supporting. I don't care what you do. Even if it's good, I'm not supporting it. Okay. If anything, I will discredit it and go against it. You know, um, because of hip-hop, you know, I was coming with the mentality of, this is just musical sport. Let's battle and let's see who, who kills the next okay. person. But here, people take it to heart. They take it to the grave, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, even after the battle, when the music is done, you know how many times I've reached out to Yoke so we can do a collabo? No. Really? Yeah. Shout out to Poopa Banja. He's more mature. Okay. You know what I mean? Actually, he just hit me up for the Creole Hip Hop the Creole remix. Hip -hop he want me on okay, it. Cool. You know? You have people that are more mature. They grow beyond things. You know? Banja is one of them. Me and Banja kick it. We joke and laugh. You know? But I've never had that opportunity with Yoke. He's still holding on to that. Okay. And it's been like 10 years, so, oh, oh, like, you know what I mean? You know, you're talking about the beef, but the funny part out of all of this is uh, the beef with Shadow Boxer. I mean, what happened with that, though? Because he was not really part of that crew in the beginning, but right. somehow, some way, you know what I mean? He got into it. Right. <laughs> when I went to America, the first time ever as a young boy, I was rhyming for a friend, yeah. some boy, you know? Like, shout out to some boy, and you was there. You know, you were there. Like, yeah. it was the three of us, me, you, and Sam. Okay. And I was killing it on the Creole freestyle. And you was like, yo, let's take him to Junior Ja. That's Shadow, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So you see, he's been around long enough, you know? Yeah. And I, I was hearing his name, him and Junior Bo, Junior when I went Bo, to America. Waff, yeah. Everybody was telling me about them. So I never, like, he hang out with my older brother. Shadow is best friends with my older brother. Okay. They play video games in Virginia together. Okay. You know, so I always had respect for him. I was shocked when he came out with a diss song against me, you know, to the point where I, I didn't even respond to him because I was more shocked, you know what I mean? Because I didn't know where that came from, okay. you know, because I was not seeing him in the league of where I'm at, you know what I mean? Okay. Like, because Shadow wasn't thinking Sierra Leone. He was trying to penetrate America, an reaction. you know? But when I went, I was like, you know what? Charity begins at home. Most rappers in America realize, oh, 
what Kyle is doing is working. So we should do this too now. But it was a little bit late. You know what I mean? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it was a little bit late. You know what I mean? I was already steps ahead. So that's where Shadow comes in. Okay. You know, but nothing but love for Shadow Boxer, man. Oh, cool. Definitely. I'd like to hear that. There goes the LAJ beef, the RFM. You know, it was the fact that you don't want the young to grow. Uh, you yeah. had your own, you know, whatever it is you had. Let me hear it. What was it? People are going to say what they're going to say, but I believe that the first time ever LAJ performed in Sierra Leone was at my show. 2009, yeah. A lot of people don't know. You see, you shock at the stadium. That was the first time ever he performed in Sierra Leone in front of more than 30,000 people. Okay. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, what happened from my own perspective was, you know, I was working with Tete. Yeah. Tete was my producer for the New Beginning album. Okay. So after the album, Tete and LAJ and them were cut house. Yeah. They were, then Cart House was splitting up at that time. They had issues. Mm -hmm. So Tete gave me some beats. He was like, oh, I gave me Bobo Naya, but you're not ready yet for work. So work on MBTI, put in your album. You know what I mean? Okay. So then, after the album came out, I was successful warrior that you guys are playing, all mm -hmm. those songs. And then Tete hit me up. He was like, my, my artist is ready now. We have a song. I think they put out the Monina Bank a year in Sierra Leone. It wasn't catching no momentum. So he hit me up. He like, Kyle, we need you on this remix. Please, bless us. I was like, all right, cool. I was in Maryland for the Salon Bobo video shoot. Mm -hmm. We were shooting the Salon Bobo, you know what I mean? I was there. So he's like, I was like, all right, let me get the number of the artist. Let me call him so I can invite him to the video shoot. Let him come through. So um, Tete gave me his number. I hit him up. I was like, yo, bro, I'm shooting a video, Salon Bobo. Can you come over? Let's all show unity. Sure, yeah. okay. You know what I mean? We're all Salon Bobos. So he couldn't make it. He didn't come. So I was leaving to go back to Philly then. Tete hit me again. He was like, Kyle, we need you to drop the verse since you're here in Maryland right now. Come through. Come to our apartment. So I went there. I recorded the verse in their room. In the room? Oh, really? Yeah, in their room, in LJ's room. That's where I recorded the Monina Bank remix verse. I did it. I used to go to Maryland every weekend, driving from Philly. <laughs> and I would be at their apartment. We'd chill, drink, joke and laugh. Tete, LJ, um, his older brother, Ishmael. Ishmael. Everybody. Okay. It was like, it was love. You know, Desmond, my cousin, I was coming to do a show with Afrisel, 2009. Desmond said, Kyle, we want this guy to perform at your show. Can he perform? You know what I mean? Please, we want to introduce him in Salon. I was like, sure. You know what I mean? Because, like, the perception when I was coming in a dry crew, no boot squad. Yeah. So the guys in America was looking at it like, Count, whenever you go Salon and they beef you, you need another man in back for camp, for back you for so back well. You so that was the thing they was telling me. I was like, yeah, sure, you know, y'all building your team, we can all go to Salon and do our and thing, do do. you know, so I can't just be a lonely man, super large. So then, boom, Desmond hit me, we want him to perform. I said, sure, tell him to call me. He never called me. I came to Salon, doing my show, the stadium was packed, two in the morning, I'm ready to go perform, and then I get a call from Desmond. He like, Kyle, we at the gate, man, your guys are stopping us. You know, I'm like, Desmond, this guy never called me, what's up? He like, please, bro, just let them let us in. We're coming to perform. Let's perform for my sake. We're family. I'm like, Des, this is tough. I'm ready to go perform. Uh -huh. And you telling me this? He's like, please. I'm like, I, I spoke with my guy Tyson. He was at the gate. Okay. Tyson is, he don't know, no joke with him. He's like a giant, mm -hmm. you know? So Tyson is there at the gate stopping them. He don't know these guys from nowhere. He don't know my relationship with, with them. them and things yeah, like that. so... Yeah, finally let them in. They came in. I was like, there's for your sake. Let LJ perform, but only two songs because I'm ready to go right. perform now. The crowd have been here. So they perform. I think they started doing five or six songs. So Tyson went on stage. He stopped the music, told them to get out of there. And then next thing you know, next day I'm chilling after performance, tired. I get, I'm getting phone calls. Yo, it's beef, man. Beef. We got beef with you. Oh, you know, man. we was embarrassed at the stadium. I'm like, what? I just let y'all perform. What y'all talking about? You know, and that's, how, that, that's how it started. That, that's, that's, that's when it was born, yeah. Black Leo that's, RFM. Yeah, that's where it All started. All right, cool. So with Black Leo, you just mentioned Shine. Um, Shine was part of Black Leo, right. and he had so many other people, um, you know, at Black Leo. So and what was, I mean, what was the issues with that or the reasons why no one ever really got to your level? Well, the key word is patience, you know. A lot of people lack patience, you know. A lot of people... Because, you know, they get the exposure with me, like touring the country, they see the crowd, they see the love, they automatically think that it's on for them. They, mm -hmm. they, they made it already. You know, like Black Leo artists, they, didn't, they never got the time for artist development, you know, where you develop 
to where you put out mixtapes, singles, your name start. Because they just come to Black Leo and it's all successful, now they think they made it. They're supposed to drop an album now. But I think it's self-explanatory. If you look at the artists that left Black Leo, are they doing better now or they was doing better when they was in Black Leo? I think that will answer to that question. You know what I mean? Okay. That will tell you where the blessings lie. That will tell you where uh, the favor is. Okay. You know, um, before they came to Black Leo, I was already who I was, Kyle Dinero packing stadiums, doing my thing. And even after they left, I'm still Kyle still De Niro, doing, doing what I'm doing. Still, you know what I mean? Even getting better. So you can tell that truthfully, I was just getting myself out of my zone trying to help some people. people. You know what I mean? To where I don't need them to succeed. I don't even need to block them. Shout out to Problem M. When, when Problem M was in Black Leo, he understand the game. You know what I mean? No. Shout out to Drama King. You know, he's still in Black Leo. The others, I think, like, their expectations were too high. You know what I mean? They just felt like, yo, you know, um, Kyle should be buying my paste in the morning. <laughs> should be buying my toothbrush, okay. my sleepers. And I went through all these things. So I'll be in America. Say, is that why they're saying, like, after your packed stadium shows, um, you normally give them 100000 each? <laughs> never in my life. To, like you keep to the all grace the money of God, them... I've never given nobody a hundred thousand dollars, a hundred thousand euros in my life after a show. Imagine I have like four securities to take care of, okay. eleven artists, and myself, and I probably have a partner to deal with that invested in the show. Okay. He takes his cut, and the little that remains, that's what I break through with everybody. Okay. People, the least people got, they will tell me I give them five hundred, six hundred, and eight hundred the most. That's what they was getting. But I was looking at it that you doing 10, 20 shows. Calculate you making 800,000 Leons, unemployed you. Unemployed you, man. That I know you will never even sell or pack a venue okay. on your own. Okay. But because of this ride you're getting, you're constantly getting paid. We're going to McKinney, you get five, six. So for every show? For every show. You were paying them? Yes. Oh, okay. To my God, for oh. every show. You know, even when Afrisel wanted to book me for, to do the show, they said, we just wanted you alone on the billboard. I said, no, Put my team. It should be with my team. You know what I mean? That's so what I was doing. you trying to do like the G-Unit thing? Yeah, I was thinking I was 50 Cent <laughs> oh coming to God. Salon. I like that. <laughs> I have Cal Dinero here with me. I mean, we, we have so much more to talk for about. Real, so I don't want you to touch that dial. Do not move because I'll be back right after this. Let's watch The Real Talk with Eileen the TV Show by our very own daughter of Sierra Leone, Eileen Kistar. This is Real Talk with Eileen TV Show, and I have Cal Dinero, Hadra Contafili, a.k.a. 50 Cent. Because <laughs> right when we went on the break, he said he thought it was 50 Cent, you know what I mean? That's why he had all those people like, you know, Tony Yeo and, and things like that. Um, but now, I mean, Black Leo, there's not a lot of people in Black Leo. We'll get to that. Okay. However, another thing about you that people say in the industry, when they say Cal Dinero, the first thing they say, I'm going to get bad ass, man. I'll let go. Things like that. Is it true or false? I mean... If I had, if I was that person, I think God would have stopped my blessings, you know, by this time. I would have fade off, you know, because I do believe that if you have a black heart, you don't like to see the progress of the next man. Okay. You know, one thing I would tell you, I'm selfish because I like myself so much. I'm just focused on myself. I'm very focused on making it. Okay. I don't know if they call that selfishness. I, I can attest to that, but I will not say I get by that. You know what I mean? Because if you check, I'm the most featured artist in the industry. Right. If you check the collabos I've done with unknown artists, mm -hmm. the artists I've brought out, RJ, Del Vacchio, Super Large, Dallas B, you know, Melody, collabo feature on me on the 5-0 songs, Stasi, Empress, your really? artist. Yeah. Like, the list goes on, you know? And after that list never paid me anything. They would just send me the beat, and I'll do it free will to help Give them some attention. Is that coming from somebody with bad arts? No. You know what I mean? Like the artists, like everybody has their own luck and their own blessings. True. You know, it's True. not my fault for God to make me this way, okay. to be shining for a long time. You know what I mean? 
You have to accept your own blessings. People don't accept their own blessings. They see you glowing and they envy it and they want to be that. And they start looking for reasons. Oh, now they block we. How can I block you? There's a studio everywhere. Go there, do your they thing, do your and thing. put it out. I don't have to tell all the fans not to like this person or to like that person. It's open. It's an open field. If you hot, they're going like to like it. You. you know what I mean? Look at Dreezy Leak. He just featured me on a song. His single that he's about to put out. Pop. Pop yeah. I'm on it. You know what I mean? Most people, they just come to Black Leo to get some attention. Once they get it, they're like, oh, we got it now. It's not his fans. It's Black Leo fans. They forget that. It's because these guys like me, that's why they like them. Okay. And then once they leave, the guys be like, mm-mm. I'm not still you with me the left. king. Like I will be left. Yeah. Okay, and now they, they left over there empty, you know, just looking around in disarray. Then they start looking for reasons like, oh, now they block me. I can't block you. It's God, you know what I mean? So the Badat thing, I don't feel like I have Badat for nobody. You know what I mean? I'm the guy that did the song Left Badat. <laughs> okay, so um, it's clear. Don't get by that. He's selfish and it's good. You know, so who do you roll with now? Right I'm now? very selective, you know what I mean? Because of my experience, okay. you know, because I tie with a bad name, the unnecessary bad name, you know? Like the, like the, all the cloud that people put on you for no reason. Okay. You know what I mean? Uh, if it was America or say you got the whole Africa with the bad name and the money's matching up the bad name, it's cool. <laughs> it's cool, but the money's <laughs> not matching up. give me up. all the bad name. The money <laughs> but here the money's not matching up the bad name. So what is, what, like, what sense does it make, you know, for you to be having sleepless nights, and you know? Like I remember most of these artists being in Black Leo calling me, I didn't have a speech with, I vomit blood. Can you help me? I'll take maybe my last $100 in the state, send it for them, you know? Oh, me picking sick. Can you help me? This is no music stuff. Okay. And I'll send personal, personal, personal stuff. Okay. And for them to just wake up one day and okay. be like, F you, screw you, you know? Some will be on Facebook insulting my mother and still wearing the watch I gave them. <laughs> like, That's funny. Okay. You know right now, Black Leo, shout out to Drama King. Okay. You know, a Drama very King. loyal brother, hardworking, very respectful. You know what I mean? Shout out to Del Vacchio. Okay. She's here. You know what I mean? Definitely doing her thing. She got a new single, by the way, coming out with Empress P. You know, TT them. Watch out for that. You know what I mean? However, I talk about Del Vacchio. That's your girl. That's your baby mother. No doubt. No yes. doubt. So... There was a lot of issues back in the days because you were married. Uh -huh. We all know that, you know. And then, right. boom, you're not with her anymore. Boom, Del Vacchio. So let me uh -oh. ask you this. Did you leave your wife because of Del Vacchio? Wow, she put me on the spot now. <laughs> Yeah, like, I tense. want to know. It's getting Did tense. you leave your wife well, because of Del Vacchio? Well, actually, the answer, I will say definitely no. Okay. Del Vacchio is not the reason why me and my ex broke up. Okay. Um, we was together for 12 years, you know. Um, it was very rough and tough, you know. Being in the spotlight, traveling, you know, leaving them, you know, I always was on the go. Coming to Salon, I was always going to Australia, Canada, you know. So I think my ex wanted a corporate guy, you okay. know, somebody with a suit and tie going to the office, staying there. But my career couldn't allow me, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, not her, because she loved me, you know. But the family pressure, you know, the background. Oh, who stand this go marry you? This music, how will they do so? Oh, can you imagine her sisters were married to bank governors? The other yeah. sister is married to a business Motown millionaire. And I, here I come, this rapper from this Salon. Rapper. I will make name. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so these are the things I was dealing with, but she was real, so she was there with me because we went through a lot of stuff, you know, together, you know, but it, it was so much to where I did my show, the first big money I made because she was so loyal to me. I was trying to please her, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I did a wedding. It was because... I was trying to please her and prove a lot of people wrong. So you're trying to say you weren't ready? It was just because think, of the family? You don't want her to look bad to the family? I didn't adjust myself right oh, okay. to make that decision. I should have really thought about it that, yo, this is a different ball game. Married life is it's, not, it's not the bad. same as Palampu life. You know okay. what I mean? You have to make adjustments before you jump into things like that. Mm -hmm. I was still being Caldenero, and mm -hmm. I jumped into that situation, you know? So, but then... There was issues, too, that I thought would change on that side. Okay. You know, once I was like, everybody was like, okay, maybe they jealous you too much. Marry them because it's something insecure. Now, make it a jealous you. 
We married and said, they go change. But then she got worse after the wedding. Oh. I'm like, so then what can I do now? You know what I mean? So it, it really drifted us apart. Unfortunately, things didn't work out. Okay. You know, but we're still in good times, you know. I you do have what kids. I Yeah, we have two kids. I do what I can to support the kids. She's a great mom. So it has nothing to do with Del Vacchio. It's just that, you know, Del Vacchio was coming into the picture as an artist around the time I was having these issues. These issues. You know? So she kind of just laid her way through into <laughs> your heart. Just you say go. it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. And it was like, okay, I want to be an artist. A lot of people will look at it king. that way. A lot of people will look at it that way, but... Is it so? Know, I wouldn't say it's so, you know. I'm not going to give her that blame. It just happened. It happened, you know. But still, even though I was working with Del Vacchio, she knew that I was married. And, you know what I mean, I kept respect. You know, there was respect level mm -hmm. there to where she knew that I have a family and things of that so nature. So you cheated? No. Yeah. We was working. <laughs> not cheat. Okay. You know, we was working on music, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Not no romantic stuff at that time. Okay. You know what I mean? But then... The lady in America moved on early. As soon as she found out there's a music artist around me and all of this, and then she moved on with her ex. Okay. So there was no time for us to reconcile or get through our differences. It's like, oh, the bad mom in the wits already. <laughs> Sorry for just <laughs> ending it. So as I never happens, it just went. It just went. So I get that part. You know what I mean? So what can I do? But me, I get the bad name. Oh, he left me woman for this Titina Salon. The woman in there and there, they would think, guy, everything cool. You know what? No, they talk, no bad name. Why the guys <laughs> always, why no, the guys get the bad name? No, not in my name. Why do you always get the blame? <laughs> but anyways, um, I've had my foot broken before. Unfortunately, you've had no yours. Doubt. But it's also saying, it's because of the vacuum. <laughs> Which, I see they went after. Like, you know, the vacuum. Oh, my foot? Yeah. No, 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 no. Okay. No. Um, pretty much what happened is, um, is this, right? Mm -hmm. I was trying to book the stadium. Okay. So she, she had just had the baby. So I left, you know, when I came back, you know, Del, she, we had an argument, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then there was a little bit of confrontation. I wasn't running after her, but okay. the floor was sleep, like slippery, okay. you know what I mean? And then I, I like kind of slipped, you know, to where I fell and mm -hmm. I broke my bones, you know, like two of my bones, my left foot. That's how it happened. Okay. You know, but God bless his soul, Mega was there. You know, Mega was the one that helped me. I was in total pain, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. And um, I, me personally, I don't think that it's just because it was like a real small, you know how you did me, you step in front of your bone and just broke? Just like that. It was just mysterious. At that time, everybody in Black Leo had access to my place where I was at. Okay. I mean, I have fan clubs. Mm -hmm. I have artists. All these guys coming into my place, you know? Mm -hmm. And... Next thing you know, I had this accident. And then everybody around me started acting funny. The next day, we were supposed to have a photo shoot. You know, I start calling these artists that you're asking them about, me mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. Like, can we go to this photo shoot? One of them called all of the other artists. Let's don't go there. I'm calling one person because, like, they're looking at me now in food on broke. It's done. It's done. The career I don't done. Now we tell them this now. So you think it was some. I believe played. so. Because it's, it's like spiritual. one of them confessed on Facebook. Before I was coming to Salon, he Are posted on Facebook, women don't broke you one foot, so the way they cow, they can't broke your other foot. When I was leaving, I took all of my clothes. Like, I usually do this, you know, because, you know, I don't go back with everything I brought. I don't leave with nothing. Mm -hmm. So Mega was the one that was right with me all the time. So when I leave, I will give everything to whoever is close to me at that time. Whatever happened whatever to that happened boots, to those shoes I was wearing when I had the problem, the person I gave the boots, he had foot problems so too. It's crazy. This is just too deep. All it's right, not even that, that serious deep. in salon. Right. There's no money too much in the industry. For but all the envy, the, the fighting each other. Right. Everybody want to be on top. It's too much. It's unnecessary. Did you hear that? This is deep. But uh, now we've talked about all of Caldinero, all that has happened before. If you don't know, now you know. The new Caldinero. Recently, I mean, your name is playing over Africa. <laughs> I mean, with everything, there was this major beef with Lurico Joe, who I didn't know about. You made me know about him. Okay. Um, some people were saying you did it because you wanted to get attention. We know you were aiming at soccer there. No doubt. How did you feel, and how did that beef come about? Yeah, um, with that situation, right, mm -hmm. um, with the Lurico Joe situation, um, there's two ways about it. 
every artist that's doing music is doing it to gain attention. Okay. You know what I mean? Whether you target an audience and, um, you know what I mean, you're looking for attention. You can get positive attention or negative attention. Mm -hmm. I looked at it like when I started my strategy, I was trying to gain new grounds, you know, because I just didn't want to be the local champion. Okay. You know, what is what else for me to prove in Sierra Leone? I've done it all. Right. Pack stadiums, release albums. I have to grow, you know. But the nature of our industry, it will keep you stagnated to where you just stay at one point. And then the next thing for you now is for you to start falling. That's what everybody's looking forward to. So, but I'm a person that's very good in reinventing myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I always know what to do next, you know, to take it to the next phase. You know, so I, I felt like it was the right time and for me to, you know, start gaining new grounds. Mm -hmm. You know, I tried with collaborating with this African artist, with Ron Town, with Sako D, with Cindy Sanyu from Uganda, all of these people, but it didn't take us nowhere, you know. And um, you have people that bring artists to Sierra Leone, mm -hmm. thinking that's going to help us help explode. Us. It's still not working. My strategy has worked because now doors are opening for Sierra Leone. You know, they resp like reacting to our music on YouTube. On YouTube and things you like know that. what I mean? It's like the get rich or die trying philosophy. You know what I mean? So it's the same, the African twist of it. So, so Lyrical you're, you're, Joe... So you're good with that. Yeah, well, Lyrical Joe, you know what I mean? People might be like, I don't know him in Sierra Leone, you know, or in Ghana. Mm -hmm. But he's respected by most of these rappers in Ghana. Okay. You know what I mean? So I felt like it was not really about Lyrical Joe. It was about the press I'm going to get in Ghana. Let me get that press. I don't care. You don't care. That's Somebody in Ghana going to be talking about, oh, Cal De Nero, some rapper from Sierra Leone, is having an issue with this lyrical joke guy. Mm -hmm. Then you can come later and check story of Lumumba and realize, oh, Cal De Nero is on a whole different level than lyrical joke. You know what I mean? That's so what that's it was. What, that's what it was. <laughs> uh, I was going to ask about the Lumumba thing, but now it kind of just made sense. Um, cool, cool, cool. So now I want you to watch something real quick. Oh, okay. Number one, Cal De Nero. Fire, but be the same, see who boy want for hell of it. You can turn on this system, always meditate. Post, post, pass. You might think, oh, Sierra Leone is a small country, but the army Cardinero has amassed for himself quite lately will give you the shock of your life. He has every reason to be on the top of this list. The Sierra Leonean rapper has one of the hardest and baddest flow in African hip-hop. Don't be fooled by his choice of wardrobe. He may not look like it on the outside, but that has nothing to do with the number of bars he's been spinning lately. Who gave you the audacity to even try to battle with me? Blue nigga is still a swallow bobby. You probably still living with your mom's dog. Cardinero has called up many rappers who claim to be the best in Africa, such as one of Ghana's own, Sakodie. Crew Cali Grab Jones, Sakodi and Emma. Niggas ain't the best from Africa. This rapper's too loud. I bring the heat so Cow is the best in the small country of Sierra Leone and has also been called the king of Freetown. All right. All right. <laughs> Underrated, Underrated rappers in Africa, Sierra Leone, Caldinero is number one. No doubt. And then, of course, you just mentioned Lyrical Joe, number two. Yeah, yeah. Vector, I mean, I have so much respect for Vector. I mean, <laughs> Vector's number three. And guess what? <laughs> Somebody else is there who's making a lot of noise and a lot of people. I think you're six. See. You know, the one that did the song with Simi and, and things and like that. And this is done by Nigerians, I believe. Yeah, Nigerians, because you know, I did my research as well when I thought I was too excited. Wow. How do you feel about this? Um, do you feel that you should be your top of the list as an African artist, or this is good, basically? Well, you know what I mean? It's better that it's not overrated. Yeah. I wouldn't want to be in the list of the most overrated artists mm -hmm. or rapper in Africa. You know what I mean? At least they say underrated. You know, it, it, it gives you room to grow, you know, and the expectations to where people want to see you grow, you know. Um, I feel like it's a start because we never used to be in the conversation. Exactly. Nobody from Sierra Leone, you know what I mean? They think about Sierra Leone, they think about Mudslide, they think Ebola. about Ebola, they think about <laughs> war. war, you know what I mean? Diamonds. That's the conversation Sierra Leone will make mm -hmm. and, uh, and the diaspora and in Africa. But now we're changing you know, that, that, that philosophy to where they think about Sierra Leone, they think about Cal De Nero, they think about Sierra Leone hip-hop, you know. That, that has been my dream, you know, because I feel like these guys are good at what they're doing, the MIs, the Sakodis, they are good at what they're doing, but I feel like I have the experience when it comes to hip-hop and I have the skills and the know-how.
to be on their level or probably even bigger, mm -hmm. you know? It's just because of the circumstance of what I've been dealing with, you know, um, like the situation back home. Look how many beefs. None of these rappers that, that are on that level have to win. They didn't go through what I went through. Okay. And Sirenia, when they say music beef, it doesn't just stay with music, you it know? It goes beyond. It goes beyond music. I'm even strong and blessed to still be here. Seriously, you have yeah. a lot of courage. Yeah. Um, I, like, I'm in hotels being bounced down. Yes, You don't even know that. where the fire came from. Did he, I mean, you were just in the hotel room? Nah, no, we went there. We was in Kono. Mm -hmm. Tour with our free cell. We doing a rally. We left the hotel. Next thing we know, we getting a call. Your hotel is in fire. Just like that. Right. The fire started right on the bed where I was sleeping. Fire. Two bags full of clothes. Everything burnt down. That. Car accidents. Oh, wow. I've been in a few here. You know what I mean? The little baby dying in Lohe. Yes. Under the car. Mm -hmm. Like, so many things. You know what I mean? It's just, like, me personally, I feel like, look at the people that made it from Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. They made it first before they came here. here. That's why they succeeded. People like Idris Elba. People like Jimmy B. They already did, did their thing, way. and then they came. Sierra, me, I'm trying to do it backwards. I'm coming to Sierra Leone, Leone first, trying then... to go. Mm -hmm. And these people are not used to seeing anybody from here make it. I used to have Sierra Leonean guys attack me because I said I'm better than Sakori. I remember all of They're that. They're like, who's Jamba you don't smoke? <laughs> they don't even hear what Sakori is saying. And, you know, and when you speak right now, I see the passion of you representing Sierra Leone. But lately, you got a little upset where you talk some really bad things about a flag that I rep. It got to the point where people were thinking, you know, well, Cal just does whatever he wants to do, and then he comes back and say, I'm sorry. sorry right. So do you really do that for attention, or you're nah, always nah. sincere when you do say you're sorry? Nah, I mean, I mean it. I'm a human, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm a person that don't hold back. That's why I have a lot of enemies, you know what I mean? Because okay. I speak out. But that's why I feel like I'm a good individual. You know, if you're my friend, you don't have to worry about Cal holding grudges against you. Because okay. if I'm pissed off, I'll tell you how I feel straight up and then tomorrow we'll talk like nothing happened but me i'm i i just feel like it's just the frustration okay of not getting the support from your own people, your own people. when you're trying to reach for a goal that's going to benefit even them because mm -hmm. in their mind they just think it's not for yourself you do not too for you you know what i mean right but they don't understand the Sierra Leonean that's playing soccer that's in sweden that has Ghanaian friends that has Cameroonian friends. But now, us. because of this, these guys can come to the field now. And people, you from that place where that guy is from? Yo, you guys are doing it. Do you it. know? Now, this guy can walk with pride. It's affecting other Sierra Leoneans. Because yep. I hate it when Ghana and Nigeria just be like Ghana meets Niger. Is, you know? know yeah. Like, you know, they're building a continent inside a continent. Okay. Like, we don't even exist. I you know, hate and that's that really thing. Yeah. yeah, like we don't even. But they come here for shows, but they, but be they like, go back and just forget about and forget about else. us and act I like we it. don't even exist. Like I, I want to show them that we exist okay. in a major way to where they can't say anything bad about it. But it's hot thing. music, entertainment, Caldinero. Word up. All right, I still have Caldinero here with me. We're almost at the end of the show. However, we still have some more to talk about. And earlier when he was talking, I can tell he's frustrated. So many things going on to the point where, I mean, with social media, I've seen so many posts where people say, oh, Cal, he needs to stay away from social media. Because when people say things about you, like you said earlier, you don't hold back. But for some of the fans, they don't want you to respond to these people. Is it because you cannot really handle criticism? Or you really just want to tell these people, like, I'm hood too. I come up with so good. I come up with I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, um, I look at it like this, you know, with critics, right? It's a very beautiful thing to criticize something, some work, you know. But I feel like in Sierra Leone, when it comes to music, my music, I feel like certain people have an agenda. You know, it's not an honest criticism they're coming with. It's coming from their own interests, maybe political affiliates, maybe these crews that we discussed about. Mm -hmm. They have their own reason and agenda of attacking my work. You know, like I said, I will do a song with Jay-Z. These people will still cry it down. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, it, it hurts, but I think definitely I have to learn to ignore. That's something I can't make no excuses for. You know what I mean? I, like, Because me, I don't see myself as a superstar. 
Okay. That's one mistake I'm making. I like to do regular things people do. You know what I mean? It hurts me when I have to like be in a prison cell because I'm because famous. You, should, okay. you know what I mean? I can't respect. But it comes with the package though. Like yeah. certain things you just have to be like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm learning that. That okay. you know, I'm not just anybody, you know what I mean? I have to restrain myself. And it hurts me, you know, because I'm so built on, you know, kicking back when you kick me or saying something back. But I guess, you know, now I have a lot more to lose. You know, like then 10 years ago, you know, I have not much to lose, you know. But now, but now, at this point, I have a lot more to lose. Credibility, respect. A lot of people hold you in high regards, you know. They look at you in a certain way. Mm -hmm. So you can't do certain things, you know what I mean? And you're working on it, like you said earlier. Definitely. All right, cool, cool, cool. You said something earlier about um, your new release. Like, if it were somebody else, maybe they would, they would have really accepted. But because it's coming from you. To me, I was really wowed out because I'm thinking, damn. I mean, you really went from, you know, Cleo, da, 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 just for Sierra Leone, and then boom, this video. And then we're talking about Africa. Do you think um, this is your break? Like, is that what you're trying to use to break in the African market with this Lumumba video? Well, everything is calculated, you know? Okay. Like, I'm calculating my moves. Like, you know, um, I, I, I do my research. I check the other rappers in Africa. I see what they're doing. Okay. They're not doing music like that. They're not talking about African stories. They're not okay. talking about the history, mm -hmm. our background, our heroes. Mm -hmm. You know, like they're thinking about Lo Jolie, they go. Mm -hmm. My next project is going to be titled Heroes. Heroes. You, you know what I mean? a lot of different stories. Yeah, stories. Who directed that video? I did. Yeah. <laughs> really? Shock, right? I had something to prove. Okay, you know? <laughs> yeah, because of the other video. <laughs> they, like, they, they, they're looking at me like, oh, like, like I'm so poor. You know what I mean? The opinion is like very limited, and they they're looking at me like I don't know what I'm doing. So you wanted you know? to show them. So I wanted to show but them show that. Pepe. Yeah, you're dealing with somebody that's very experienced, that knows what he's doing, but he's dealing with limited resources. Okay. That's the only thing that's holding me back: limited right. resources. resources. But I can do what these guys do times plus. You know what I mean? I can limited direct resources. movies. That's Money. it. That's the only thing because I'm All independent. Right. You know, okay. I don't have no investors, don't have investors. nothing. Okay. I'm doing everything on my own. We not like it's been like three months, no shows. I haven't performed. Right. Some artists are crying broke right now. No, no, no. <laughs> None of that, right? No. But like Bob Mali said, if a politician does you a favor, he owns you forever. And you don't want that. No. I like that. Um, so we're almost at the end of the show, but I want to say this. Um it's been what twenty years in the game. That's yeah. that's how long yeah, it's been. Yeah, yeah. almost you know, to twenty. Right, and yeah. then so you still have people saying, "Oh, twenty years in the game. He hasn't done anything. He hasn't achieved anything. Age is telling on him and things like that." <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you're about forty-two. Nah, uh, just on forty. You're just on forty. Yeah. Okay, and things like that. So, do you feel that age is telling on you, or age is just a number? You still. Push I mean, it? if they're still waiting for Shadow Boxer to drop a song. I think it would be biased for them to look at me like age is telling on me. He's still being embraced. Nobody's telling him about age. Why me? Why you? <laughs> like it's because, is it because of the twenty years. No, I've been on top like... for too long. They want to see somebody else come on top. So that's the issue. That's the issue. It's not about it's the simple age. Simple as that. Yeah, it's just like ah, we're tired already. You don't do up for too long. You win. You don't go feel now. You're not giving up. Like, I mean, I feel you like you just started. <laughs> no, don't, don't make them panic. <laughs> oh, well. okay, I mean, so I feel you, like I got yeah. more to do in Africa and the rest of the world. But in Sierra Leone, you know, I'm like right now I'm embarking on something greater. You know, I have some partners that okay. we're trying to do like an art institute What's that this on? is what I'm working on behind music. Um, you've had some, you know, um, good collaborations with inter international superstars. Um, who are you looking to feature next? Well, the irony of it is, this time I want to challenge myself to where they feature me. You know what I mean? Ooh. Yeah, because I've done, like you said, I've done it. I want to get it to where it's so hot. That I, they, they're running they come after you. They come from reverse. Okay, so you know? you're not looking at anybody no, right no, now? No, I'm not looking for nobody. But you never know in the next six months, because I've got some calls. Okay. I'm not going to say names, but I've gotten some calls. Mm -hmm. You know, something's going to happen to where that wish will come true. 
Amen. You, you hear this guy's featuring Kyle De Niro or something. Amen. Amen. You know? yeah. So we have, you know, we're going to play a little, we're not really a game, but I have some fun facts questions. Uh -huh. This is the last <laughs> official question. What's the most courageous thing you've done in your life? The most courageous thing I've done. I've had a few. Cause okay, go ahead. Spit. <laughs> but the most one was when we faced the incident in Conor with the fire. Oh, wow. I mean, then we performed the same night. Oh. So the hotel burnt down, and then we went and performed. We still killed it. I kept my, my courage up. Mm -hmm. Leaving the stage, my hat was taken away. My chain was grabbed. Even at that moment, at the lowest moment, they still took everything I had. I was left with one pants and one t-shirt. And you still just did you. And then people would walk up to you and be like, hey, 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 you can't shop now, and I, how they closed in at home. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you've been through so much, <laughs> I swear. Saying? All right, so these are some fun facts questions. Um, just really, really fun questions. If you were a footballer, who would you be? If I was a footballer, who would I be? Mm -hmm. I would probably choose my favorite footballer. And who's that? That's Maradona. Maradona, OK. Yeah, for Argentina. All right, cool. That's my all-time greatest. All right. Um, another is, what are next one you expect to get for beef? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, Sierra Leone is out of it. Okay. I don't care if anybody diss me or do whatever they can do. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to diss back. So all the rappers thinking out this cow de Nero, you wasting your time. You're done with that. I'm done with that. I'm not doing none of that no more. You know, but in Africa though, yeah, I still have some guys I'm looking at. I'm and he texts me, I maybe I just knew you were gonna say this. It texts me to my next question. Just fun fact. Uh, if you have MI Sakodi and Fino in a cipher, who do you really I mean, who do you think you can take easily like that in a cipher? Four of you guys. Hmm. Sakodi Fino. And MI. And MI, yeah. Um, I think, you know, the thing about Sarkodi is, Sarkodi is very dope when he raps in Twee. But when he raps in English, he's average as hell. <laughs> like, I can literally tell what his next line gonna be. Like, yeah, I step in the game, and I'm on lame. I can tell what he's gonna, he's say, gonna next. say next. If so. I can tell what you can say next when you rhyme, you average. Okay. If it's spitting in English, okay. Sarkodi will be the, first, the less challenged. Okay. You know? So, am I in Fino? Fino is dope, but I've never heard him speak in English. He oh, just yeah, do the Igbo thing, you know? So, but lives with MI. MI is, MI is definitely dope. Okay. I'll tell you that. It'll be much. a tough battle. Yeah, MI yeah. is dope. He's <laughs> I like that. So, no one comes here. Well, actually, right. um, had a special edition with Empress Bear, give her a gift. But this is the first uh. official <laughs> episode. So, yes, it wow. will be like this every time I get a guest. So there you go. That's so From dope. Real That's Talk so team, dope. everyone here to you. This is Thank for you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Oh, You're welcome. That's so and nice, you know. Yes. Real Talk with Eileen TV show. This is something I'll keep, you know, forever. Make Real sure you talk. keep it. Definitely. And make sure you talk about <laughs> it as well. Definitely. Definitely. Thank you so much, Kyle. You're welcome. Dear. I want everyone to stay tuned, of course, every Wednesday at 10 o'clock on AYV TV, FTN Star TV, and AI Radio. I go by the name Alin Keister and being your host today. Till next week, I said bye.